I'm just going to do the, I was going to do psych observation, but I'm actually going to do the suicide watch one. <laughs> okay, um, it's kind of got a funny part to it and kind of got a bad part to it because, okay, er, anybody's ever been locked up before, they know you don't get no privacy in prison or jail. You have no privacy at all. <laughs> okay, and, um, well... I was going through a lot, of course I told everybody in my other videos, uh, all the stuff that I was going through when I was locked up with my daughter and everything, and I was always really depressed, and like I said, I did not, that last time I went was the third time, and it was the worst time I ever done, the long, the longest time I done, and the, this the worst time I've ever done, it, I, I, let the, I let the time do me instead of me doing the time and well I was trying to actually ask around and ask people because I've heard there was a suicide watch and I didn't know what they done in it how they treated the people or nothing like that then I heard about psych observation and then there was even people actually literally people was really doing this there's a protective custody what they call PC and um they was actually going to that just to get away from general population for a little while, you know, and, but it, I don't know why, because it's max, it's, you're in a one-man cell, and you don't, you don't, if you go outside, you have to be in handcuffs and shackles, and a, go into a, pretty much a dog kennel or something, you know, it's like a cage when you go outside, but anyway, I was asked, just asking questions about it to all kind of different people to find out what what was what. Nobody knew what I was trying to do or nothing like that, you know. But the main thing is I was needing some time alone to myself to think. There was so much going on in my life at that moment in time and I just had a lot so much going on and I didn't know what really what to do and not there were so many people around you People always starting fights all the time. People arguing all the time, and you really don't have much to. I mean, I never shed a tear in front of anybody. But I tell you what, when I got there, whew, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, I chose. I don't know why, but I chose a suicide watch the first time. Which actually, going by the the man that put me in it, he's not the actual doctor. Doctor, he's the psych, uh, psychologist or whatever on the ground, and uh, he does it for the men and the women. Well, <laughs> he, based on what I told him, he thought I needed to go there. I guess I gave him all the right answers, but it wasn't just that. I. I, t I t you know they always ask they always always ask the question do you think you're gonna hurt uh, hurt yourself or hurt somebody else or something like that and I was like no I said I'm just really really depressed right now and there's a lot of things going on right now in my life too and it just seems to get worse and worse and I can't seem to focus and can't seem to make it in general, general population and well he put me on suicide watch and I was not ready for that definitely 
<sighs> I've seen so many things and heard about things and other documentaries and stuff about it. a turtle suit. Well, I found out what a turtle suit is. I didn't know I was going to be. I didn't know it was going to be like that. I thought I was going to have at least a mat. <laughs> I thought I was going to have a mat, and maybe. Well, I knew you couldn't have a blanket. I've been seeing because they think you're going to hang yourself or something. But <laughs> uh, I thought I was going to at least have a mat because the mats. What are you going to do with a mat? A mat. A, a mat's like a mat. I mean, a prison mat is. It's just hard to explain, but. What, what are you going to do with it? I mean, it's got foam in it. Are you going to choke yourself with foam? Like, tear it to get tear it apart and somehow. Anyway, um, yeah, he put me on it. And they always send you that RNC, not RNC, but uh, 720 clinic over there. And they, for some reason, they do your vital signs and everything before they put you in it. I don't know why they do that. But they did that. And... But like I said, I didn't know what was waiting for me, y'all, now. At the time, I did not know what was waiting for me. I'm just knowing that I'm going to, to suicide watch. And they take me to the place. <clears throat> we get over there, hear a lot, of, a lot of noise out the windows. I guess it's all the inmates yelling out the windows. Or actually... I found out later on they wasn't yelling out the windows, they was yelling at each other from room to room. He, I mean, it's like one man cells inside that Max place. And they was all yelling at each other, talking to each other. I guess they had friends, girlfriends, whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, locked up in there with them, I guess. I don't know. I've even seen people actually reoffend just to come back and see their woman. And I think that's, that's messed up. I would never go back. For something like that, that's crazy. But anyway, it, it happens. A lot of things happen in prison. But anyway, um, <coughs> yeah, I was there, and um, they told me to go to the bathroom, and uh, I had to remove my the, the clothing that I had on. I still had my I had black and white stripes on the last time I went because I went for technical violation, which, <clears throat> excuse me, automatically puts you in black and white, so the green and white, which is AAA custody, and that makes you a tr trustee, where you can go, um, actually go to satellite, or go off ground and work, and stuff like that with, it, with other inmates, well, this time I wasn't, so anyway, they, um, made me interested and everything, and they handed me this thing, I'll never forget that. <clears throat> I'll never forget it. Um, I was like, how does this go on? <laughs> I looked at it, and I was like, I mean, I was like trying to figure out where my arms go and everything. I'm like, this is what I'm wearing, or this is what I'm covering up with? <laughs> and they said, that's what you're wearing. I was like, okay. And I sort of, I mean, I didn't say it to them, but in, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what has these people got me into that I've asked questions about? Never ask inmates questions, y'all. Never, what they call inmate.com. They'll never trust inmates. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I was, like I said, I done that, I had to get away. And I just felt like, I just, I couldn't take it in the zone, so, anyway, they had this green thing right in front of me, and I was like, here, you need to remove your clothing and put this on, and like I said, I was holding it, I'm thinking, how's this thing supposed to go on, it's got Velcro on it, I know that, and it looks really nasty, it looks like it's never been washed before, and it's like a, like a really, I don't know what color green, I would say, it's, well, it's darker than the, the green on the Sprite. I know that. Uh, I don't have green right now, actually. The dark is that smock. Well, I guess the green is green and the darkest green in this was how dark it was all over. And, like I said, it had Velcro. That I couldn't figure out which, what part was what yet. But after I figured it out, 
the Velcro, it was like a vest. It didn't have any arms, and it, it actually Velcroed right here, and Velcroed like just pretty much like a robe goes around you, and it Velcroed right there on the side. And that's all you're pretty much wearing. You're not wearing any anything underneath, under you, or nothing. Just a turtle seat, what they call a turtle seat. And, wow. And I didn't know I wasn't going to have a mat. And that was really awful, too. And what's bad is <clears throat> you also, oh, well, let me finish this other part first. You walk uh, walk so far to where, wherever you're going, and some of me walk forever. I was at the very, very end of that wing. Well, the zone, but it was a wing of each zone. I mean, it was like a whole lot of, okay, Max holds, uh, I'm not sure, if I saw, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself from another video, but if I haven't already told you, Max, what they call MSU, actually, they don't call it just Max, they call it MSU, like, I want to go MSU or whatever, they call it MSU, and not Mississippi State University. <laughs> Every time I heard it, I was like, okay, but um, anyway, <clears throat> we was there at MSU and um, walking down the hall and I'm sitting there thinking I'm looking at each one as we're walking by and I'm seeing people, every single inmate is looking out their window it's actually that thick it looks like it's that thick but it's really not but when you're looking out of it or in it, it looks that thick uh, anyway we're walking through there, and I'm, I can hear people saying stuff, but I'm not, at my point in time, I'm not, I'm blocking out everything, you know, I'm not thinking about nothing about what nobody's saying or nothing, I'm just trying to get to wherever I'm going so I can get in there and be with myself. Well, anyway, we finally reach my cell, and it's at the very end, of, and um, they put me in there and my it's another thing too I, I found out also you can okay in in the regular zone when you're in uh, general population you get three the women get three rolls of toilet paper a week okay or any even when you're on PC or whatever you get toilet paper on you like uh, OP on person well they didn't do that Suicide Watch don't even get their own toilet paper. You have to ask for toilet paper. And also, a Suicide Watch, the guard is supposed to watch them or come check on them every every 15 minutes. They didn't do that either. They didn't check. There was actually some really bad people in there that actually had tried to kill themselves and already had cut on themselves and everything and even went to the hosp real hospital off grounds for trying to had stitches and was pulling their stitches out, staples out, just doing all kind of weird stuff. And um, anyway, uh, this one girl I found out she uh, tried to kill herself because she lost her kids and it wasn't through it wasn't through DHS or whatever. It was actually in a car wreck. Her sister was driving the kids to the park or something like that, and they was trying to get to it. It's a big city. I can't remember where they're from. I think it was Jackson, Mississippi. But anyway, they was driving them uh, through town and they, they hit a car head on. And um, it was really, really bad. I can't really go into details about that because that was really, really bad. Um, she found out later that two of the, two of the small ch children didn't have seat belts on. They were in the back seat playing and they wasn't in the vehicle when it, whenever the ambulance and stuff came. It was just awful. but. She was in there because she lost her, t her children. They died, and she was literally trying to kill herself every way she tr could on any kind of metal piece that was laying around or anything that was sticking out of the of the bed you rack you sleep on. She was trying to find anything that she could just go like that and just do whatever she could do. But uh, anyway, yeah, I found out some things about people that was around me because you have to talk to people through the walls and out the it's like a little crack you can kind of yell but you have to yell really loud because everybody else is talking 
and it's so loud over there. I mean, you might be in there by yourself or whatever, but you, you, I mean, it's, you don't get peace and quiet until probably a little late at night, not really sure what time, and get, then it starts getting kind of a little quiet, enough to go to sleep. But, um, anyway, uh, I was in there, I'm trying to think of how long, I, what's, I, oh yeah, they let me have my, they did let me have my Bible, I had my Bible, and that's all I had, and they didn't know that I had a picture of my daughter in my Bible, I had it in there a certain way to where I, it actually went with me down there from here to six hours south from here in Jackson, well, it's just brought up like 10 minutes from Jackson, Mississippi. It's way down there Pat, in Pearl, Mississippi. Pearl, Mississippi. But anyway, um, I actually had brought that. You're not supposed to bring anything besides a Bible and a thing of clear deodorant with you when you leave the jail to go to the prison on a bus. But um, that picture had, was in there and I, did, I wasn't trying to hide it, but it was in there and I could couldn't get it off that page and it's been been there for a while but uh that was the picture I, I had opened my bible up later that day and realized I forgot that it was there and I started bawling my eyes out again thinking about the things that was going on out there with my daughter and DHS trying to take that take her and and just hearing other stuff that was going on and not wanting to believe everything, you know, and not want to take things in, and also realizing that my daughter was at the age where she, you know, she, she, she just, you know, can catch on to everything, and finally be able to show her feelings on how she felt about everything, and you know, she let her feelings out, and let her since she wrote me in. It hurt, it hurt really bad, but, you know, she was letting her anger out. You know, she had every right to do it, but, okay. Um, I'll share that on another story on all that, but right now I'm trying to finish with this, a psych, uh, well, the same thing, they also do psych observation over there, psychological observation, if you want to say. But, um, I was on suicide watch for, like, Oh yeah, about the toilet paper. The toilet paper, I hardly ever got toilet paper. But I, there was one guard that finally came on the next day that gave me a whole roll of toilet paper all to myself. A whole roll of toilet paper. I was like, oh my gosh. It was like, ah. <laughs> but anyway, I got the toilet paper and I was like, great. I got my own roll of toilet paper. They weren't supposed to do that, but they did. And um, anyway, I guess they seen that I wasn't no problem. I wouldn't bother nobody. But, um, or even trying to kill myself for that matter. At the, but, you know, at the time, I had so many thoughts going on. I don't really tell you all the truth. I really don't know what I was thinking. I had a lot going on. And I still, every now and then, still have a lot of things going on. But I know how to cope with it better than I used to. And anyway, um, uh, the next day I came around, I got the toilet paper. Um, and then I realized while I was in there that they did not check every 15 minutes. They checked probably, probably just when the food came around. And really they didn't check then because, well, when the food came around, they didn't even look in there. <clears throat> they had another inmate, excuse me, trustee inmate. I, I didn't know they had trustees in a lockup place like that. I don't, I thought that was the, the guard's job. Yeah, they have trustees that are actually going from there to the kitchen, which is across the way or whatever from there. They get let out the door and go over there. How in the world they didn't do that, I don't know. But anyway, I guess they have their own um, hookups or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we got fed to the tray hole. And um, on suicide watch, they will not let you get out and take a bath or shower. No baths, y'all. You'll get baths in prison. <laughs> Sorry, the best your bubble. <laughs> anyway, yeah, they do not, that's one thing I found out to you. You cannot 
they will not let you out to take a shower. Now, if you're there, if you got in trouble now, if you got in trouble, or you're there on psych observation, you have a little bit more pr privileges and stuff like that. If you're there, if you're there and got in trouble, you actually can get canteen and all that stuff. But or commissary, they call it canteen where I'm, where I'm the prison I went to, and commissary in jail, but canteen in prison. Anyway, the next day, um, I was actually ready to actually get out already. The next day, and it, I was, but I wasn't actually. I wanted, I still wanted that time to myself, but then again, I couldn't, I couldn't stand being that itchy, nasty smock or whatever, or turtle suit, whatever you want to call it. It just, I felt so gross and nasty and everything, and, but I kept, they kept coming around and asking me questions every now and then, asking me how, like, the nurse, she does medication once a day. She's supposed to do it three times a day, but she does it once a day. <clears throat> I wasn't on any uh, psych meds except for on a medicine called Vistoril. It's like a very, 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 very low, uh, mild nerve medicine. It's like the lowest of the lowest, but it's supposed to help with anxiety. But I actually read on it, and it actually helps. It's an antihistamine. But anyway, uh, besides that. Um, I didn't really see the nurse but twice. I was there literally that y'all though. I was there for almost a whole entire week and a week there is like feels like three weeks or something. I mean it feels way longer than that. But I ne they didn't let me use the phone because I have a phone you know that, that rolls around that has a big old cord and rolls to each tray hole and People who's on PC, they can use it uh, certain times at uh, certain days and certain times of the day. They can use the phone, and of course, you got minutes on your thing or whatever, you know, your phone. Uh, but uh, the, phone, the phone list or whatever you got, and that the person that you're calling has minutes on that global tail link. I'm not sure what they call it in other states, but I think it's the same global tail link. Global tell, <laughs> global. Anyway, um, and guess what? I found out also when it was time about ready time for me to get out of there. Guess what the doctor's name was? I'm not playing, y'all. I, I I'm not I'm not playing at all when I tell you this. The doctor's name, the one that can actually get you out, the one that puts you in there, he can't get you out. You have to wait till the psych doctor comes around. Like I said, you'll never guess what the doctor's name was. Dr. Kumar. His name was Dr. Kumar. And I remember every time he came around, there, you could be sound asleep or whatever, or just asleep, not sound asleep, but asleep, but you always knew me it's coming around because you hear it by saying, Kumar, 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 or something like that. You'll hear him yelling it, and you knew he was coming. And that's when all the ones that wanted to get out of there, that he, that they knew that he's the only person to get them out, would start running the door. But he came, he came to me first. He didn't go to nobody else first. He came straight to me. Didn't give me time to think or nothing. But... Actually, at the time, I wasn't ready to get out. Uh, at least I thought so anyway. I don't know. He came to the door and said, How are you doing? And I said, Um, I guess I've had, you know, I've been having some time here to think and everything, and I guess I'm ready to go back to the zone. He said, You okay with your medicine? I said, I'm just taking Vistaril actually and I don't really take it like three times a day. I don't have to have it but once a day probably even in fact. And he's like, okay, I change your medicine and you go back to the zone. I put your paperwork now or something like that. Some weird, I don't know how he said that, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> it took probably about it took a while though for them to get me out of there. It took them about three or four hours to get me out of there. And I finally got out of there and went back to the zone. 
and when I went back to the zone that same night, actually I didn't get back to that, it was night time when I got back, it was dark, because there was a little bus all the way down there to the uh, building I was in, to a A zone, I remember that, anyway, they brought me there, and see what's messed up is when you go to psych, psych observation max, uh, suicide watch, any of that stuff, they take everything off your bed and put it and even out of your out of your drawer, everything. They take everything out and they put it in storage. And that's they they lose so many people's stuff that way. And I even had a pair of uh, state issued tennis shoes come up missing. But uh, anyway, they couldn't find my mat, so I I was without a mat the entire night. Actually, um, uh, two days I was up without a mat. I slept on the flat. Uh, still thing. I didn't get no mat at all. My bed was still open, thank God, but I didn't have no mat. No mat was available. They said they didn't have, not have a mat available. But anyway, I had to figure out something. I had some people that I knew in there from my hometown that had came in there at other time, and they had actually was helping me with blankets and told me when I get my stuff just to get back to them. And I laid the blankets down on that steel, and I was laying there, and I had a freaking panic attack the night that I got back because it was too much. Everybody was walking up to me, asking me how it was, how how it was, and how uh, how uh, how everything went in there, and oh, I I didn't have much to say because really when I was over there, I really wasn't thinking about how bad it was in there. I was thinking about yeah. I was thinking about how cold I was or whatever, but I wasn't thinking about, I was thinking about just my daughter, you know. I wasn't really thinking about all, everything else and how, you can't, there's one thing that you cannot do. You can't sit there and say, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? Because you can't do nothing when you're in prison. You, you got, that's one thing that I that couldn't get that through my head when I was in prison. That's one of my main problems was I could never get that through my head at all. And everybody kept telling me the same thing, especially my hometown, Selena. She kept telling me all the time, she kept saying, you're gonna have to, until you understand that you cannot do nothing about what's going out there on the, in the free world, you're not gonna be able to cope with what's going on in here. She said, you need to, be, you need to realize that. And that was actually some good advice because what she said to me really, I mean, I didn't sink in until actually six months before I came home. But, um, yeah, that, I really, a lot of things really got to me. And I could, I, I'm not, I could not cope well that last time I got locked up. you think by the third time I was being used to it. But no, it, 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 that place got worse every time too. But, yeah, I had a real bad panic attack because everybody was all in my face and everything, asking me questions like, how was it? Uh, did you have to wear that turtle suit? Like, like it's all funny and everything. I'm sort of thinking, really? Y'all, oh my gosh. I said, look, I need to lay down. I'm sort of, I don't feel right. I didn't tell nobody I was having a panic attack. But then all of a sudden, when it got really, really bad, that's when I started freaking out. And, but they all knew about panic attacks there. They, they all, t Every time anything's wrong with you, I don't care what it is, I tell you to lay on your left side 30 minutes. For 30 minutes, lay on your left side, you'll be okay. That's for everything. It don't matter if you fell down and broke your hip. It don't matter if you had a stroke. It don't matter if you th think you had any of that stuff wrong with you. They tell you to lay down for 30 minutes, that's it. And maybe they'll call the nurse over there or something like that. The band-aid station. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. I got over my panic attack. It got really bad that night, actually. It got to where I was actually hyperventilating, but somebody brought me a wet rug, and I was doing my breathing and all that stuff, and it finally went away, and I guess I fell asleep too the, in the process. But I'm sorry, y'all, there's a siren in the background, and um, gosh, this right here is why I got the PayPal link up to help me get this, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry y'all, I'm so sorry. Okay, anyway, I'm very sorry about the noise in the background, very sorry, I'm so sorry. That's, I got a PayPal link up there for people to 
please help me get the equipment that I need so I can not have the noise in this background and I have to use this webcam for a camera, have better lighting and give you all better, better uh, presentation and everything. I really would appreciate it. If anybody could, anybody, you know, it'll help. Every little bit will help. I don't care if it's a dollar, two dollars, whatever. Anything will help. But anyway, aside from that, that was it. And that's how it went when I was in Suicide Watch. And I did not want to go back there again. Um, but anyway, I will give you all another story about psych observation. Because I was on it before too. So I will let you all know that next time. So um, I'm going to leave you all with that. And please keep com uh, comment below. And peace and love y'all. Bye.